Well, this video is probably going to get demonetized. Hey guys, welcome to The Homestead. Today we're going to talk about two more items, two more buyer items that will probably benefit you. I know they will benefit you if you take inventory of yourself and add some of these things to your inventory. Um, throughout history, these things have been very important in the survival and well-being of people, people groups, and cultures. So let's go ahead and get to the first one. If you haven't guessed, it's probably going to be firearms. So firearms, um, having firearms, and this is why YouTube is probably good demonetize this video because they don't like it when people hold these nasty black ugly boomsticks they don't like it don't like it at all um and that's why you can always go to our patreon channel patreon.com slash an american homestead and support the homestead from there in fact i just put a video up um today no yesterday today about how i lost 50 pounds and how you can too and i give you all the benefits and scenario of how i did that so check that out over at patreon.com slash an american homestead and videos like this always get demonetized. A lot of my videos get demonetized. I get warnings. I get strikes. Usually they, they take away the strike, but uh, sometimes they don't. So um, anyway, patreon.com slash an American homestead. You can also support the homestead by buying some of our t-shirt merchandise. Stupid should hurt. Obviously an absolute bestseller here on the homestead because if there was more hurt, there'd be a lot less stupid. And we also have farm fresh butt nuggets, uh, farm hair don't care. Um, crazy uh, chicken lady, and um, again, the stupid shit hurt shirt. Check them out over links in the description below from teespring.com. Anyway, on to the video. Uh, this is an AR 9mm, kind of like my sub gun, and um, I use that. I have this for different purposes on the homestead, but having a rifle is important. Having a way to defend yourself in times of collapse is absolutely important, but it also can be a good barter tool. Uh, you can use this in a number of ways for bartering. You can use this for hunting and use what you hunt for barter. You can maybe barter the ammo. If you need, if you have extra ammo, you've stored up a lot. You've been, you've been, uh, it's been important to you to save and set aside an, a good amount of ammo for a rainy day. You may decide, you know what? I've got a little bit extra. I think I'm going to part with it because there's something I need, a part I need for a machine or whatever. And I'm at the flea market and they have it. It's always good to have a few rounds of ammunition in your pocket that you can trade um, for something that you may need. So firearms and uh, the, the materials that go to make firearms work have always been tradable, barterable materials dating all the way back into the 1700s when people had to make their own gunpowder with saltpeter and um, – uh, what is it? Saltpeter, charcoal. Uh, uh, you, anyway, you can find the list of ingredients online. I mean, I'm not sure. I, I usually know these. I'm having a brain fart, I think. But, you know, it, patches, you know, lead, has uh, things like this has always been a good barter material. Someone left a comment recently about, Zach, hey, why don't you start doing uh, reloading? Well, because I took a look at reloading a few years back, and I looked at it with these lenses on of preparedness and bartering, and I just decided there was just too much. There was too many pieces and parts to all of this stuff that if something broke, I would probably not get replaced. I'd have to, you know, two is one, one is none, right? And I didn't want to have to buy double of everything in case something broke or if something, all the different components, all the pieces that go to make, the, I just didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't have a place to put it. And I just figured, you know what? I'm going to buy a bunch of ammo and that's going to be my supply. And if I have extra, great. If I don't, well, you know, you barter and trade and get by with what you got. Um, you know, there'll be someone out there who does want to do that and go down that road. That's for them. And I'll grow something that they don't have and I'll trade and barter for ammo with them. So if you're into that sort of thing, good on you, but it's just not for me. I didn't want to do it. Also, having extra firearms is good. I would have an extra. I would have a firearm for everyone in your family, even the women, even the wife who doesn't want to shoot, or the daughter who doesn't want to shoot, or even maybe the son who doesn't want to shoot. I can't imagine that's possible. But if someone doesn't want to shoot, they should still have a firearm. So because if it comes down to it, and they need to be trained on it and be able to hit the broadside of a barn with it, so that if it ever came down to using it, they would they would know how. They would know how it functions. They would be able to pick it up and operate that particular weapon system. So. Anyway, firearms, having that 
is important, a way to defend yourself and having some extra materials, maybe some extra magazines, um, a sling, some other things that you might be able to barter and trade uh, on hand or maybe have an, have an extra firearm or rig. I call them rigs because just having the gun isn't enough. We'll do a video on Patreon about that. Um, a video on why your rifle is absolutely worthless. Even if it's fully loaded, has magazines and everything, it's absolutely worthless if you don't have this one thing. So I call it a rig because not just a rifle, it comes with a whole bunch of other stuff that you ought to have on hand uh, for every weapon system, every platform that you own. So we'll talk about that on Patreon. Join if you haven't done that already. Let's move on to the next one. That is this, this right here. This box contains my other barter item that we're going to talk about. And that is, again, I am a student of history. I love studying history. And if you've ever done any study of history, uh, especially in the 1700s, 1800s, you know the spice trade was huge. Entire nations built vast navies of hundreds of ships mounted with decks upon decks of cannon. And just all of this emphasis was put on spice trade and protecting that spice trade from other countries who wanted in on that money-making venture because they made tons of money on it. Let's take a look at this article. This article posted over at NPR. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, NPR. All right, it says nutmeg, cinnamon, and cloves are probably ramping up in importance in your spice cabinet right about now, the classic flavors of the winter season. But while you might be shopping for local ingredients for your favorite recipes for eggnog or maple glazed ham, uh, the odds are that the spices you're using were imported from the other side of the world. Lior Lev Circas thinks spices should be local too. As owner of Le Boit, a spice store in Manhattan that creates blends for chefs and home cooks, Lev Circas travels far and wide in search of the best spices. Spices tell the story of the world, he says. There's a reason why good spices are good. They are the flavors of the regions that they come from and, the, and they also support that economy. Nowhere is the demand for spices more evident than in the United States, which leads the world in consumption and imports. A U.S. Department of Agriculture report showed that Americans have dramatically embraced spices over the last past 50 years. Per capita, spice consumption in 1966 was 1.2 pounds annually, while that figure more than tripled by 2015 to 3.7 pounds. Clearly, Americans think spice is nice. But how robust are your taste buds? Vanilla beans, pepper, black, white, and chili, sesame seeds, cinnamon, mustard, and oregano are most common spice imports in the U.S., and there has been an uptick in cumin, paprika, and turmeric in recent years. Lev Circas sees a, a Lev Circat Lev Circars, whatever his name is, I can't pronounce that, sees a public that is gaining appreciation for an expanded menu of global foods, including uh, from Indian to Korean to Ethiopian, but it comes at a cost. We don't really grow spices in the United States, says Lev Sirkars. Not because we can't, but because big agriculture is more focused on things like corn and soybeans. So we import from other countries and we pay a price for that. And the article goes on saying that, you know, some of these things we can't grow, but some of these things we can and we should really grow more spices. So I have spices. I like spices. My nose is itching because I'm actually too close to this box and it just, it, it just there's so much spice here. <laughs> My nose itch. I'm probably going to sneeze here in a minute. Um, big things are to uh, really pay attention to. Cinnamon. Cinnamon is not grown in the United States. It can't be grown in the United States. Um, let's see what else. Cumin. I don't think can be grown in the United States. Chili powder. Uh, you can grow this in certain parts of the United States, like in the South, but really, unless you have like a heated place, like if you're up north, too far up north, you're just not going to be able to have your spice, your hot spicy stuff. Um, just doesn't work that way. Um, oh, my, one of my favorites to talk about black pepper you know like the you know salt and pepper right pepper you can't it doesn't grow here i think it grows around the equator you it's imported so you can't grow black pepper here this is probably what's setting my nose on fire um so things like that you have uh paprika spanish post smoked paprika that i have here um oregano i think you can grow oregano in time here uh cilantro i know you can grow here there's just other things like um um nutmeg and um, some types of mustard. What is it? Um, what was the other one in here? I knew that was not grown. No, I have cayenne. You can grow cayenne here. Well, some places, at least down south. Vanilla, vanilla, nutmeg, cloves, turmeric, mostly turmeric. But v vanilla, especially, you guys love vanilla. You can't get vanilla. Um, you know, it doesn't grow here. If 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 there's a collapse, if, if there's a, you know, it hits the... 
if the manure hits the rotating oscillator event, <laughs> you're not going to be able to get vanilla. It's just gone. You're not going to be able to grow it. There's no way you can grow it here, guys. Now, because history is what it is, I think the spice trade will very quickly get up and running again. But it may take time for that to happen. So it might be good for you to have some spices set aside in bulk if you can get them. Um, and you can buy them in bulk in different places. Uh, that's what this place does down the road. They, they, they actually buy the bulk and they set, buy. I mean, this is like a garlic powder is like two sixty eight. That's way cheaper than you can find at the store in like the little you know things that they have on the store shelves and like your lo local box grocery stores, whatever. So we have a place that sells them here in bulk in bigger packages, and you get that cost savings. But if you can put some of this stuff aside, then you're going to come out on top. And if you have even extra, you can barter and trade. That's going to be something that people will find very valuable for barter and trade in a post-collapse economy. Something to keep in mind. All right, guys, we got more videos coming up on barter and trade, some more items that you guys have suggested. Some of them you're going to be very surprised about. And again, at the end, we're going to talk about some things that I would consider way too valuable do we even think about trading, bartering with? No, no, absolutely not. I won't barter that with that ever. We'll talk about some of those too and, um, and some other things. So stay tuned. Before you go, be sure to hit that like button. It helps YouTube know that people watch and enjoy our channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Please hit the like button and then leave a comment below. Let me know some of the things that you are stocking for barter and trade. Some of the things that you think might be beneficial for barter and trade. Some of the best ideas I've gotten are some of the ones down in the comments. So leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. And then also, again, check out our merchandise over at teespring.com. Links in the description below. All the shirts are available down there. And again, I'll remind you, patreon.com slash an American homestead. There's videos that you won't find here that are only posted over there. All right. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>